Christian minister and a Vietnam veteran. I believe God called me to do this. And um, it actually it was a three time thing. Three nights in a row, I was woke up at midnight. And it's uncommon, you know, for that to happen. And first night, I I thought it was God talking to me, but then I thought, well, maybe I'm hallucinating because uh, I'm too old to be walking across America. You know, I hadn't been watching the Force Gump yet. And I uh, didn't even know about it. So, uh, well, the third night, I just said, huh, I can't argue with God. I don't know how to do this. I'm an old man. Um, I said, God, you're just going to have to do it. If you're asking me to do this, you're going to have to help me do it. So he says, what I got was the message, I'm going to help you through this. And he has. Uh, I've been through a lot of pain. I've had a miraculous healing in my right knee in North Carolina. Um, people have tried to kill me twice, and I've been miraculously delivered. I believe that God is um, behind this thing, you know. What is, what is God trying to, I mean, the why, message, why is God? The, the message is... Second Chronicles 7.14. You can look it up, but it goes like this. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, that's a relationship, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. You know, a lot of us Americans believe that our country has degenerated over the last 50 years. Others disagree with us, but there's a, a large number of us who believe that America has turned in a wrong direction. And one of the biggest problems is that we've pushed God out of society. I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about, you know, I believe in the separation of church and state, but I don't believe in the separation of God and society. We need our children to learn how to pray. We need our families to pray together. We need our schools to pray. We need our politicians to pray. Yeah, we need God in our society. Now, for those who don't believe in God, you know, I don't believe in pushing those people out of society, but they need to be reminded that this nation was not founded on the principles of atheism. This country and our Constitution and all of our founding documents were founded on the principles of, well, basically religious principles, such as the Golden Rule. And I think even our agnostic and atheist friends will agree with that, that rule. So I'm promoting the Ten Commandments, or I'm calling attention to the Ten Commandments, I'm calling attention to the Golden Rule calling attention to our Constitution and Bill of Rights, founding documents, um, our founding fathers, those principles, those guiding principles that made this country the greatest country in the world. And so I'm also, um, this is the first prayer walk in the history of America where I pray for each community as I go through, pray for the nation daily. Um, you know, you've heard of national prayer walks, but that's when churches or an organization set aside a day and have a national day of prayers. So this is a one-year, basically, project. What day did you start? Uh, April 23rd. It was on our 19th wedding anniversary. We started with a kiss and a prayer from uh, Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. And I've been praying every day. Did you go, did you go into Kill Devil Hills? Uh, you're not from there. No, I'm from Tennessee. Do you um, go there because of the name? Or? Yeah, yeah, that Kill Devil <laughs> Park kind of attracted me. And it has historic significance, you know. I, when I met with the, the city council there, the mayor asked me, what in the world did you pick Kill Devil Hills for? And I said, well, you know, first in flight, very significant historic place. But I said, as a, as a minister, I really like those words, Kill Devil. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm going to let you go on your way, well, but I just wanted to, you know, wish you well on your trip. And, well, actually, I'm stopping at the radio station. <laughs>